making sure that. All right, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Um, okay, can we confirm that the slides are in the right orientation? Let me know if they're not. Yes, they um, are. Thank you. All right, so I'm excited to be here. And uh, yes, I, I put this provocative title up because um, I wanted to talk um, just short and sweet about our observations with data sharing and more specifically with data consumption of shared data. Um, so I wanna start with this, why are we sharing data? Um, uh, and I, I love this figure from this paper that came out a couple of years ago um, that talked about the size of, of teams and the nature of the data done across various sized scientific teams. And the basic premise here is that individual labs are using data to innovate and um, larger groups, so consortia, et cetera, et cetera are using data to, to develop. They're using data to evaluate innovative new findings and establish norms and standards. And we need data reuse for both of these, both of these processes, right? We need to allow individual labs to have access to the data that they need to innovate. And quite importantly, if we're ever going to get the translational impact that we would like, we need to allow other groups to be able to use the data to objectively evaluate the outputs that each of us are coming out with. Um, and I posit that my thesis for this talk is that the major barriers to data reuse, to consumption of data generated by others are social. They're not just technical or even scientific. Um, so we've talked a lot in um, the previous sessions and, and many of the other meetings that we've been about, about um, what we need from data in order to be able to effectively reuse it. We know that sharing data is not sufficient. The data needs to be fair. It needs to be well described. It needs to be well annotated. But even with all of the advances that we've come up with in, in terms of how we can effectively provide this in standardized, automated, and even machine learnable, manners, it's still the case um, that when a, a data consumer comes along a set of data sitting in one of these repositories, it ha they have to ask, is this data of sufficiently high quality for the analysis that I want to do? And I think more importantly and harder to capture, is this data actually fit for the purpose that I wish to use it for? Is this data going to actually help me answer the question I want? And that's really hard to capture um, within, within the, the, the various um, annotations that we're, um, that we're using. Um, so the observations that I'm talking about today come from my own experiences over the last decade at Sage Bio Networks. Uh, we have a platform the, the goal of the platform is um, actually to support scientists in um, collaborative research analytics, but at the base of all of that is the need for shared data resources that scientists can use on top of that. And what we found as we built, built a general repository to allow scientists to compute on data, um, and not just the data within our system, but any data that's available on, on the web, is that this strategy made a lot of sense to us as technologists, but it didn't make so much sense to our scientists. Scientists came in and they were naturally wary of the data that they had access to because they couldn't answer these questions. This simple question of, is this data appropriate for the questions I want to ask, and they um, and they just couldn't get at that. And so, what we found over the last, say, half decade is that we need to be um, a little bit uh, smarter into tapping into the existing mechanisms by which individuals evaluate assets that they're they're trying to use, and that is through their own um, through their own networks. And so, we've started to build a set of applications that sit on top of general data repositories that create a, a community um, perspective. And so here's some examples of, of some of these um, community portals that we've created. So all of these portals are using data on the back end that's coming from the same general repositories, but they're packaging it um, into the context that a specific community um, needs in order to be able to understand the data and trust the data for use. And um, 
uh, I want to just take you through a quick example of this so you get a sense of what I mean um, in, in the specific and not in the abstract. And I'm going to use the AD Knowledge Portal as an example. This is, um, this is a NIH, uh, NIA funded portal that was explicitly built to support the NIA's interest in translational research around Alzheimer's disease. So um, here's a slide from Susanna Petencheska at the NIA demonstrating um, their, uh, their funding strategy for uh, catalyzing translational research in Alzheimer's disease. And the, the set of, of, of grants, and I think we're, we're talking about um, dozens and dozens of grants um, on the, let's see, left-hand side of this, this study are looking at collecting molecular data from human samples and from a, a variety of different experimental models, all to address the same question. And the NIA was interested in A, making sure that this data is shared for broad consumption, because it's uh, particularly data coming from human brain samples, highly valuable and very difficult to, um, to, to access those samples to generate. And two, they're very interested in uh, researchers coming together around these problems to share not just data, but the insights and methodologies that they're using. And so, um, so what did we do to be able to enable this? Well, quite simply, we took the general infrastructure that we had built and we built on top of it, these community specific mechanisms. So there's a, up in the data discoverability section, there's a very specific entrance point for search and query, the AD knowledge portal. And then on the right hand side, there's a very explicit set of applications that enable exploration of results and of an objective evaluation. So uh, the reproducible and transparent um, processes that the scientists in these consortia are using are surfaced, um, are surfaced over here on the results explorer for others to use and evaluate, independently evaluate whether these are results that they actually trust enough to, to follow up on. Um, and so the, the AD Knowledge Portal uh, interface itself provides search and query, and I think really importantly, not just for data, but for all of the components of, of the community research that's going on here. So we explicitly let people search by uh, people um, because people trust people that they know are doing high quality data or high quality research and are more likely to use their data if they have um, that established trust already. Um, we allow people to search by publications, by study, by programs, et cetera, et cetera. So you get, you start to get a sense of the context, this sort of unstructured metadata, the context of what is going on um, in, this, in this ecosystem. And it, and it paints a picture that we found allows the data consumers coming in to feel more comfortable about the data that they can access here. And I mean, it's, it's really a very simple social, um, uh, social approach to this, which is to ensure that everyone understands enough about where the data is coming to feel comfortable using it. So we also have a uh, robust set of uh, mechanisms that we use to build on the existing um, social infrastructure, uh, social networks that, that these communities of researchers have with the explicit goal of linking the data generators and the data users or consumers. And so here's a list of some of the things that we have been doing. Um, this work can often feel like it's just sort of added on on top of the important work of generating a data repository and building the infrastructure and, and making sure the data is deposited. But we find that it's absolutely essential in order to get effective uptake. And so I'm just showing you a little screenshot here of the discussion forum. Um, and I, I see, I'm sorry, I apologize, it's too small to see, but effectively uh, one of the data consumers is coming in and saying, uh, hey, I'm looking at the following uh, data file. So, so this discussion forum is linked to a specific data file. And I think there's a mistake in it. And the data curator is coming in and saying, yes, actually, you're right. There is a mistake. Thank you. We'll update it now. Um, and the user says, thank you. And then actually in the last line, they say, oh, actually, I think I found another mistake, right? And so I think that's really important, right? Because as we're mandating um, early 
data sharing from our many uh, data generators uh, across the NIH ecosystem, there are going to be mistakes in the data. And one of the greatest way to be able to show uh, external users that they can trust the data is to be able to transparently demonstrate community evaluation of those data sets. And so we often find that the data sets that are most broadly um, taken up and reused are those where actually the community is in there talking about the data and the quality of the data. So others, others can now come in and trust the data because they see that it's effectively been um, QC'd not just by the data generator, um, but also by other members of the community. And this is really important as we begin to mandate that data is shared earlier and earlier in the life cycle. So for this particular project, data is supposed to be shared within months of coming off the machines before the data generators have a chance to do all of the QC that you might expect, because QC is an iterative process that happens through for, for months or years throughout the analytical uh, life cycle. And so the data um, is going up in a raw enough for a form that there just will be mistakes and we need a way for the data consumers to, to, to be able to trust in it. Um, the other thing that this sort of community-based approach enables is the, um, and which is very uh, interesting in many cases uh, for funders who are trying to establish collaborative research communities, is the ability to start to aggregate interested researchers around common questions that the data can answer. And so in this particular um, case, we have quite a few uh, community-based working groups wh which are seeded by funded researchers within um, the data generating population, but then open to anyone who comes in through the portal who's interested in actually um, uh, contributing to or even just observing what is going on um, with, within the communities, uh, within the consortiums themselves. And so here's some examples of the types of things that we've seen have been um, really effective um, in helping the community establish trust in the data and in the outputs of the data. Um, and so I, what do we see in terms of data consumption? Um, well, so we, we've got a fair number of um, individuals using these data resources. These are pretty specialized data for pretty specialized sets of questions. So we're looking at users in the thousands, not in the, um, not broader than that. I mean, what we see is that uh, researchers are interested in two things. One is, um, they're interested in the newest data that comes in. They're very curious about that. And then the other is they're really interested in the data where there's already been a conversation about it, whether that happens in the consortium wide working groups or it happens in the discussion forum, the more conversation there is about the data, the more they trust it. Um, and so I'll just end here to say that as we have started to populate these individual community portals, um, they create a wonderful opportunity within a specific set of individuals. Um, but what do we do when we want to start to link across those communities, right? Building on existing social networks um, and communities will get you to a certain point. But as we start to think about going across diseases or across disciplines, we need to figure out how to interoperate across that. And I think that there's work we can do in, um, in, cre in, in adding the information um, into our metadata that might help researchers who don't know each other to learn to trust the data. Um, but I think we're going to have to pair that with some of these uh, social approaches and figure out how to extend them be beyond a set of people who already know and trust each other. Um, I'll end there. Thank you.